So um, <laughs> I just say a couple of things about our speakers. Uh, Teresa Matsu uh, is based in Doha, where she's the artistic director and creator of Katara Art Center, which is an artist-led platform for contemporary art and creative industries emerging from the Gulf of the Middle East. Uh, Nestrin Hall is a visual artist, filmmaker, and television producer uh, who lives and works in Bayou. Uh, and among other things, she has directed very short films and documentaries from 1998 uh, to the present. Uh, and the title of their uh, presentation is Everyone Knows This Is Nowhere. This should be interesting. Well, actually, it's everybody knows this. <laughs> OK, so that was a tight box. <laughs> um, so what we're, uh, what we're presenting here is, uh, is our project uh, that uh, Ms. Jean and I co-curated and uh, use uh, the, uh, the video that tickets by uh, Hassan Samhar. Now, uh, after having been invited by me to take part of uh, what we understood as a European Mediterranean art project with an activist objective, uh, and archive being demarcated by the Lebanese borders, at the time it created many irritations uh, to the C and I. And we were pretty reluctant to those labels, and especially having, you know, we're, we're all still living in a post colonial, uh, you know, imperialist world in different uh, uh, jobs, and, uh, and uh, and the word is too. So basically, we were uh, we we were turned off by the labels. Uh, this quickly, though, turned into a refusal to adhere to the labels, and in fact, a dismissal of the subject altogether. Uh, that was over a year and a half ago, and uh, the Mediterranean since then has witnessed major changes, starting from Tunisia and now Syria, and so has our project with it. So we no longer could stick to our refusal of being labeled by nationality or geography, and uh, in light of the many rapid changes affecting our collective memory in this part of the world, we decided to stick to uh, the dismissal of the subject turned into the dismissal of the format, the curatorial framework and the presentation in a white cube surrounding, turning it away from the art market's parameters. So it became more of a, an art for art uh, sake project. Um, the focus shifted on the work of art itself and the artists with whom we share affinities on the state of being and the treatment of the artwork itself. And here, the medium was crucial, a video, moving images as a witness of our ephemeral and migrating lives, somehow detached from materiality and the collectible. Uh, the objective was to place the artwork on a pedestal rather than the concept and the artist's reputation, which have viciously in the contemporary art market become the determining value and token of appreciation. Names become obsolete and the work lives beyond the author. On a practical level, what we've achieved in this project is simply to make the work visible in a space to an audience then took it out of a space and made it visible in the imaginary of another audience who we're presenting to at the moment. What we're dealing with here right now is a reinterpretation of work of art. It is purely the artwork that inspired and triggered the interpretations we here present today. The work. One sequence all the way through on each screen. Left, a car ride, right, a naked man. A car driving down a mountain on a two-way winding road, no music. The speed is steady, but dangerously fluid. It stops at no turn or curve, as if it is a train ride with no bearings or rails. The attention is acutely focused on the descent. A naked man appears on the right screen in an empty space as if floating on a dusty white background. The breathing is heavy, yet he appears to be calm, showing a body that refuses to adhere to social aesthetics, and its only offense is its imminent presence. 
His eyes are fixing one point in an invisible horizon intensely. The car on the left screen continues in its frenzy ride. The road is clear yet worryingly empty. The mountain reveals very little of its nature, of its geography, giving a complete sense of isolation. The man continues in his standstill position, staring at us, staring at him, waiting. The image slowly fades and returns constantly yet unpredictably. The military barricade bearing the Lebanese flag as, in, as is in sight. The car stops on the side. The barricade appears to be desert deserted, yet the car stops. On the other end, another car stops, both in waiting, no sign of a human presence, as if the cars are driven by opposing spirits in the middle or reflective space. Still, no sign of the man moving anywhere. Resilient, he resists time, the gaze of the other, the nakedness. Finally, the car on the opposite side decides to cross hesitantly, getting closer to what suddenly is perceived as our parked car. And our parked car goes nowhere. The man fades out, only leaving a trace of his previous presence. Nothing else other than a bird makes an impromptu appearance. So we leave the work and then we go into philosophical interpretations, references, um, and the work lives on its own. We can talk about the thick uh, format uh, from the analysis of Deleuze and Bacon, we can uh, go on the, uh, the other and the duality, the, the double of Dostoevsky, but really here what I would like to to do is basically to invite you to uh, to look at the work, uh, which is we're not going to look at right now. It's going to be uh, at the exhibition. But leave those words and those texts in the imaginary, just to give it another life. Uh, now, Ms. Lin can explain to you what she's done from an artist's perspective with the with this work. <coughs> and how it turned into another author, uh, author's work. It's, it's just a, for the very simple gesture, I'm presenting the work tonight at the Lanitis uh, Center as an artist, and I had presented that same work as a curator in the youth. So I just wanted it to to say in a cliche way to cross borders, I was, uh, it's just through me, it was presented as a curator and now as an artist and uh, just questioning a little bit um, the borderline and, and my role uh, in a way in making this uh, work visible. And um, so also that I, I have proposed since there was an artist, writer, or, or a scholar collaboration, I have uh, proposed to Len Arsanius, who is a writer and a curator, uh, to think of a way to um, uh, write something, write a text um, uh, around this. And this in itself became also an interpretation and, a, and another word. It, 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 uh, we decided, we devised that it would be a fictional round paper between the different persons involved in um, uh, creating this work or showing it. And uh, also the booklet uh, with the text in it will be available in the, um, in the exhibition space. Very short, that's it. <laughs> We speak with a chance to, something I've got to mention earlier that uh, those of us, uh, those, those of you who said that were with us yesterday, you know that the papers yesterday concerned uh, the works we have at the exhibition that's opening tonight at the center. The papers we have today and tomorrow, uh, uh, several of them are independent uh, scholarly papers like the ones we, we've had um, earlier today. And, and the others have, uh, would be dealing with projects that have been going abroad for the past year and a half as the uh, part of the whole project of the roadblocks. Uh, in the case of this project, uh, it was also brought, announced, brought also uh, to the center, so you can see uh, 
uh, what uh, has been talked about tonight. So, any, but any questions, please? Perhaps it was a bit different without, yeah, perhaps it was different without the visuals. Yeah, yeah, visuals but, yeah, visuals, but, yeah but, but it was intended to. Exactly, because okay. it, it is going to be shown. This, is, this was the interesting point for us also to take this approach because, uh, because I, I, I was going to work on this with my son in Beirut as a curator. Uh -huh. I was participating in the Beirut through the Roblox chapter. Yet also I had um, a proposal for me and uh, Elena to um, show something as an artist. And, and for me, I wanted to make this uh, simple gesture of having yes. the same work and uh, as a curator and as an artist to question a little bit this uh, position. Yes. Um, and also that's why like it's um, just outlining the, the whole project. Mm. And actually, way. we do have a question over there. There's a microphone you can use uh, the bottom somewhere next to you. Is the light on? Just make sure the light is on. Press yeah. something there. Is it still working out? Maybe stand up and shout a bit more or use another one from your left, maybe next one, uh, on the other side of you. Or I can I can uh try try that one. Let's go through it. No? Probably something I'm doing wrong. We we can hear you here. Yeah. Yeah. Speak up and speak up. Uh, because I'm artist and curator as well, I was interested it's how different it was what I watch as a curator and as an artist. Um, so you're asking whether it was the same approach as an artist? Yeah. I think yeah. you are feeling that you have a different hat every time that you are. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. It is just um, and that's why I call it like a simple gesture of, of because somehow there is this this husband and it still is a practice of an artist showing another artist's work as their own work and. Um, and I've always wondered about that. And, and, but actually, through the text that um, Milan Arsanius had written, um, it, it, it sort of um, answers a little bit that, and it goes a little bit into the surreal, because I don't think I have um, an answer to this position. I think it makes sense. Sorry, I'm not. I'm just curious to understand how, in this case, you're the curator of the same work, and if nothing has changed, how do you become the artist, or is that something that's going to be obvious in the in the work? No, uh, I have the same question. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you still did initiate something else. Yes, I did initiate the text, and I, um, in a way, initiated uh, mainly the uh, big part, uh, the whole project, I mean, with, with myself. So also this makes me wonder, like, is also an artist um, an initiator of another artwork? I mean, could that be also my artwork? I don't know if it's the... Uh, I think there, there's a, also an interesting example that's happening right now in the contemporary uh, art world, and I'll stick to the example of Lebanon uh, with uh, the work of Ekrem Zahtari, who, uh, who used uh, negatives of another photographer and uh, reappropriated the image as his own artwork. And the, the work lives as Ekrem Zahtari's work. Um, so there is this uh, this borrowing, this whole borrowing uh, 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 that is happening, and it's it, it's nothing very new. No, I was just wondering if it was that sort of thing, yes. or if it was just changed somehow. But I, I didn't understand it through your. Um, also, like uh, the filmmaker Hassan Salhab and I had collaborated on other projects, like really collaborated in making one work and. Um, so there's a bit of a history as well to um, this kind of collaboration that I'm also like questioning in, in this, uh, this work as well. 
Uh, actually, uh, this gives me also the chance to say that one of the things we stressed in the whole project of the roadblocks was also the uh, interpersonal uh, transgressions, if you like. In other words, uh, uh, the, the whole uh, dialogues and, and, and the collaborations uh, to us were as important as even the, the final results, whether it's the exhibition of the papers that are being presented. So, one, one of the lines that we were have challenged to cross were our own personal ones, including labels as artist, curator, uh, theorist, practitioner, who does what, and what kind of dialogue they engage. So I think that's also a, a wonderful example of that. Okay. There's a question up there. Yes, yeah. Oh. Thank you. 